I'm not going to go over the, the cystodes. I'm just going to discuss about the trematodes, and uh, sorry, the nematodes. We've I have other videos on the cystode if you want to go over it. So we're going to discuss about the nematodes. The nematodes are the roundworms. They are also known as the roundworms. Please take note. So the nematodes, nematodes, they are round, roundworms. They're just roundworms. Why are they called roundworms? It's because they're actually round. They are unsegmented, unlike the previous parasite we've discussed about. The previous parasites are actually segmented. They have segment. But the nematodes, they are unsegmented. They don't have segments. They are unsegmented. Compared to uh, the tapeworms, you remember the tapeworms, they have uh, what is called, um, what is called the, the proglottids. The proglottids are in segments. So they are segmented. They are segmented. But nematodes, known as the roundworms, they are unsegmented. And this is one of the largest groups that we are going to discuss. I know this is very interesting parasites for every one of us here. We all have heard about um, nematodes before. So we are going to discuss briefly, very fast, the major one, the IE one, that you need to remember ahead of uh, MDCN exams. So the one you need to remember ahead of MDCN exams are the one we'll discuss. So we are going to start with the uh, enterobius vermicularis. So doctors, let me go to my pictures. So I'll be showing us the pictures. It's very important to take note of the pictures, please. Doctors, please, can you all see my PowerPoint? Can you see, please, can yes, you can you can reply so I can know. Can you all see my, my uh, picture? Can you see my picture? Yes. Yes. So, doctor, this is what? What do you call it? This is actually known as the enterobius vermicularis. And other name for enterobius vermicularis is known as the pinworm. This is very important. Enterobius vermicularis, also known as the pinworm. It looks like a pin. This is very, very important. Eh? Somebody saying something. Eh? No. All right. This looks like a pin. It's refers to as the pin one. The other names. So please, for your exams, it's necessary for you to know other names for these parasites. So the first groups under the nematodes we are going to be discussing about is the pin one. Pin one, also known as the enterobius vermicularis. Okay. Another name is pin one. Okay, please, for us to know not just the other names, we will have to know the disease that are associated with this and the mode of transmission. So mostly, how do we get enterobial vermicularis? Transmission, transmission is by injection of the egg. So if the, somebody ingests the eggs of enterobial vermicularis, it goes to the gut, it goes to the intestine, and it's mature in the intestine. I get him a doctor, so it's gotten by ingestion of eggs. So when you ingest the egg of enterobial vermicularis, you can have it. And the disease that is associated with this enterobial vermicularis is also very important. So there's something we call the periana purutus. So this um, enterobial vermicularis, also known as the uh, pinworm, is associated with what is called the periana itching. So what happens is this is disease mostly common in young children, in somebody who is somebody who is working with children, excuse me, somebody who is maybe a pediatrician, maybe a school teacher. Most of them are people that are associated with this illness. So they always have this that you always see the child always putting his hand in his uh, always itching his anus. And mostly at night, this is very dangerous. This is not good at night because the effect is mostly is very high at night. Because at night when the child is asleep, what this pinworm does is they come out. They come out and lay their eggs around the periana region. So the child won't even be able to sleep well. During the day, the child will be irritable. The child will always be itching his anus. So the presenting complaint, the mother will come is, this child is always putting his hand, always itching, always itching his anus. So this is periana puritus. Are you getting me, doctor? And his major cause is, um, Pinworm. And okay, let me just write. It causes what is called the periana itching. Let's say periana itching. Okay, also known as the periana puritus. 
Periana Puritus Puritus Puritus. This take no doctors. This is very important. So the causes uh, Puritus of the Periana region and diagnosis. How do we diagnose this? Diagnosis is very important for us to diagnose is what the doctor will do is the doctor will give the mother a tape which is known as a scotch tape and the mother they will you tell the mother or the person that bring the child like, at night so when this child is sleeping try and take this tape and tape it on the anal region and the next day remove it and bring it to the hospital you know why because at night this um roundworm comes out and lays their head no. around the periana region so when they lay their eggs there when you put the scotch tape, some of the eggs is going to stitch on it and you're going to bring it. Even sometimes you can see the warmth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Sometimes you can see the warmth. This is very, very important. Please take note. This is very, very important. So they cause periana puritus. So the diagnosis is by a technique called the scotch tape. You will see this in MCQ, scotch tape technique. Okay. So scotch tape technique is the method that we use to investigate it. And please, doctors, and even sometimes in female, these um, worms can find their way to the vagina. This is not so good. It can find their way to the vagina. And the eggs is always a diagnostics. You can see, let me show us the pictures of the worm, how it looks like again. This is a worm. And this is the egg of the worm. You can see one side of the egg is sort of a bit flat and the other is a bit like bend. This side is like flat. Can you see what I'm saying? And this, this is the worm. Please take note. Take note of the worm. Take note of the pictures and take note. And also the treatment. How do you want to treat somebody that is having this? The treatment is actually very easy. You just use your membendazos. You use your zoos. Membendazos. So treatment is by use of membendazos. So that's what you, you, you used to treat. Please, doctor, very important. When you are treating the person, this, is, this can be very infectious. So you have to treat the whole family at large. You don't just treat, um, let's say, the child alone and leave the mother. Treat everybody. Clean up the house. Make sure everything is okay. Please, take note. This that about um, our first part of the, what is it called? The nematodes, which is the P1. So the other one we are going to be talking about that MDCN also asks is the trichurus trichura. Trichurus trichura. We'll talk about this now. So this is another parasite that MDCN love to ask also. They ask questions on it. It comes out yearly, actually. It comes out yearly. Trichuris trichura. What do I mean by trichuris trichura? Another name for it is what? Any doctor have an idea? What other name do we call this? Whip worm. Yes, this is known as the whip worm. Thank you. It's known as the whip worm. It's known as the whip worm. Why is it called the whip worm? Because it looks like whip. You know the whip they use in beating horses and all the rest. It's just something like this. Right? And the whip is just something like this. You know whip now, doctor. This is how whips. You hold it to flock. So this parasite looks just like that whip. Let, let, let me show the picture so we can identify it. Can you see, doctor? Can you see? It's looking like whip. You can see the handle here and this is the whip. So it's looking like whip. Please take note. This is known as um, the trichurus trichura. So it's also known as the whip worm. Very important. And apart from that, another thing we should know is how do we get it? It's also similar. It's just injection of the egg. So transmission is by what? Injection of egg. Injection of eggs. So that's how it's being transmitted. So apart from that, the, um, the disease they cause. The disease they cause. This is actually, MDCM will always ask you on this. The disease they cause or the affected organ, they actually result into rectal prolapse. This is what MDCM asks. They can ask you a question, so so and so is actually with rectal prolapse, the parasite. It is whipworm, trichuris trichura. Please don't forget, should in case you see this uh, question in your exam, always remember today. I said it's associated with uh, rectal prolapse. It's associated with rectal prolapse. Do you understand? Please, doctor, take note. 
sometimes it can be associated with things like appendicitis and all, some other things. You understand? But the major thing that is associated with is rectal prolapse. Please take note, okay? So another thing we'll talk about that you should remember is the diagnosis. How do you make a diagnosis of it? Diagnosis. The diagnosis is the eggs in the feces. So the eggs is actually very unique. Let me show us the egg. Let me show us the egg very quick. Doctors, can you see how the eggs looks like? Can you see the egg is just like a football sort of a, a all this ball and was it was in that American football thing? And we oh sorry, with a with a opacular head here. You can see this bipolar head. This side, you can see the egg. So yes. it's very it's very unique. It's unique to its own. So once you, once you see the egg, you should know this is egg of what of a whipworm. It's very unique. It's barrel shape. You can see it's barrel shape. Take note. So the egg is the diagnostics because the egg is very unique to, is very unique. Just take note, please. Okay, the diagnosis, diagnosis is eggs in feces. Okay, and the eggs, you know the eggs is what? Eggs are barrel, they are barrel shaped. Barrel shaped egg with uh, two end, with two bipolar um, plug or something, yeah. So the treatment, let's talk about the treatment. We have a lot of things. I hope I'm not too fast, doctor. I'm trying to cover yeah. so we can cover the necessary things we need to cover yeah. for today, okay? So please, should, in case you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me, please. So the treatment is actually you, your ambendazo. Ambendazos. Please take note. So that is that about um, trichurus trichura. So the next, any question regarding what we've just discussed about before we forge ahead? Any other questions? Any question? No, no. All right, good. No. So let's go to the next parasite. Let's go to the next parasite. So the next parasite we'll be talking about is actually the most very common parasite. It's the largest of uh, all. It's called the Ascaris lumbricoides. The Ascaris. Asca everybody here should know Ascaris, obviously. Ascaris. Lumbricoides is very large, they are the largest. And anybody remember the other names for it? Giant roundworms. Yes, thank you. This is referred to as the giant roundworm. Giant round roundworms. These are a lot everywhere in the world. They have Ascaris lumbricoides. They are referred to as the giant. Roundworm, and how do you get uh, Ascaris lumbricoides? Transmission. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. All right. Let's, let's go back to the screen. So we are talking about the giant roundworm. Okay. So the Ascaris lumbricoides is what we are talking about. Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris. Lumbri. Doctor, the video we made available, I guess. You understand? The video, I think it went far with the video. The video will be made available. Let's continue. Ascaris lumbricoid is also known as the giant rand worms. Giant rand worms. Okay. Please let's take note of the giant rand worms. Somebody is saying. Does whip worm occur in both children? And, yes, it can occur. Yes, both children and adults. But the one that is peculiar for children is the what's it called? Uh, the pin worm. Very very associated with in pediatric cases a lot. You understand? It can also affect adults. Adults that are around those places can be affected. If somebody in the family is affected, it can affect the entire family. You understand? So Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides, also known as it. Uh, the giant uh, roundworm. So what do I mean by the giant roundworm? The mode of transmission. This one is a lot everywhere in the world. Mode of transmission is through injection of the eggs. So it's injection of the egg. So there's something interesting about Ascaris lumbricoides in the father. When you ingest the egg, the lava goes to the lung first, okay? And when the lava gets to the lung, you see later the person begins to cough and the lava comes back and goes to the small intestine and you swallow it. And that is where it mature in the small intestine. Please take note. So it goes to the lung, from the lung, and in the lung, sometimes it can result into pneumonitis. 
you can have uh, symptoms of pneumonitis. So it can be presented with pneumonitis first. You understand? So the disease is caused, they call it ascariasis. Okay? What is ascariasis? Everybody knows ascaris. Ascaris can be very dangerous. It can go and obstruct, uh, what's it called? It can, it can obstruct the bite dot. It can resort into gallstone and all the rest. Uh, sorry, um, it can go obstruct the, the duodenum, the, the sphincter of ODDA, and it can resort into different things. If you remember your surgery, we, I think we've discussed something like this in surgery before. And eh, doctor? Yeah. Yeah, ascariasis. So that's the disease it causes. It causes ascariasis. And very important, you should be able to identify ascaris when you see the picture of ascaris. Let me show us the picture of ascaris, how ascaris looks like. This is ascaris. Very, very common. I think majority of us here, maybe one time in our life, we'll probably stool ascaris. So this is ascaris. This is how ascaris lumbricoides looks like. And this is the egg of ascaris. The egg is also very unique. Please take note. It's very unique. The egg, the, the egg is kind of, it's knobby. You can see the out, outer part is like it's having some knob. Can you see? It's knobby. So when you see something like this, you know, this is the eggs of Ascaris lumbricoides. It's very unique when you want to give a diagnosis of Ascaris lumbricoides. Please take note of this, please, doctor. Okay? So very interesting. Another thing you should know is Ascaris lumbricoides, I told you, you can obstruct different things. You can obstruct the bile. You can obstruct... Let me put it, can obstruct the bi or the bi dot. Okay, so it can obstruct the bi dot. So that's, that's about it. And the diagnosis, diagnosis of Ascaris lumbricoides is what? The diagnosis. It's true, what doctor? It's true, eggs in stool. You just examine the stool, or maybe when you see the adult worm coming out, it's very obvious, it's very unique. You know this is ascariasis. This is ascaris coming out. So you know what to do. Then you treat. So X in stool could be diagnostic. Okay. X in stool or feces could be diagnostic or adult worm. When you see the adult worm, adult worm could also be a diagnosis. Could as a diagnostic. Please take note of this point, they are very important. And how do you want to manage this? How do you want to treat it? Treatment of Ascaris lumbricoides, you use what is called the membendazos. Membendazos. Please take note, that's how you manage it. And if somebody is presented with pneumonitis, if you want to treat your normal pneumonitis, the presenting complaint and all the rest. So that's it about that. Please, any question at this point? Any question regarding uh, Ascaris lumbricoides? about uh, whip worm, about pin worm. Any question, please, before we continue, please, doctor. If you have any yeah. question about trichuris, trichura, about enterobius vermicularis, somebody said, um, does whip worm occur? Okay, there are symptoms. Yeah, we are discussing about their symptoms, doctors. This one will present with gastrointestinal symptoms. The other one I said it will presented with periana uh, puritus. I thought we were discussing about symptoms. Doctor, Doctor are you getting it? I said, Trichurus, trichurus will present with what? Rectal prolapse. That's the major thing. And for interumbial vermicularis, they present with what? Periana puritus. And here is ascariasis. Mostly gastrointestinal disturbance. It can go obstruct the bile. And when it obstructs the bile, it can cause uh, the bile dot. It can, you know what it can result into. And it can even cause pneumonitis. I thought we were discussing about the symptoms. Please take note. Any other question? Any other question before we continue? All right. No. The absence of no question, let's continue. So the next thing you need to know is actually the toxocaracanis and toxocaracatis. Let me show you the pictures here. What do I mean by toxocaracatis and toxocaracanis? Catis, canis, from dog and from cat. This one, my, you might just, all you need to know is this is the hex here, okay? And mostly the transmission is also maybe um, is gotten from somebody who is okay. All this one we are, uh, is gotten from somebody who is probably adding cat or adding dog, depending on which one you are handling. It can be cat or dog. So those are the people that are prone to having this worm. And this worm, what it goes, it, it goes, you ingest it and it starts migrating around the body, around the gastrointestinal system. So that is why it causes what is called the 
um, viscera larva migrants. The larva begin to migrate around you, around the gastrointestinal system. So let me just write it. We are going to discuss about another one that causes what is called cutaneous larva migrants later on, but I want us to take note the difference between both. This one causes what is called the viscera larva migrant. We are talking about toxo, toxocara canis, or let's say catis, depending on the organism that you are getting it from. So they are the same thing, either from dog, from puppies, or from cats, okay? And this is, this you get this, this transmitted by people who are handling cat or dog or puppies, you go kiss and do all those things. You might be, you are prone to having something like that. So the disease it caused, it caused what is called the viscera lava migrants. This is just English word. And what does that mean? It means the lava is migrating around the viscera. So the lava is migrating in the body. And this can cause severe inflammation. Causes different because as the um, lava is moving, it can cause different inflammation, resulting into inflammation. Okay, it can be very dangerous. It's not so good. And the treatment is actually also easy. You can do surgical removal of the worm, or you can also use a um, membendazo. Membendazos. Okay, please take note. Your azos are very important here. Or you can do surgical, surgical remover of the worm. Okay, please take note of this, please. And that is that about the first group of worms. The first group of worms I want us to take note is all these: Tosocara canis or Catis, Ascaris lumbricoides, your Trichurus trichura, and your Entamoebius vermicularis. You should take note. Now, the other group of the worms that I'm going to explain to you now are worms that have hook. They are round worms. They are still round, but they have hook. These are referred to as the hook worm. Are you getting what I'm saying, doctors? And under these hook worms, the first one I'm going to try to explain to us here is our Nicato Americanus. There are two types. There's Nicato Americanus. Uh, we are going to discuss about Nicato Americanus and the uh, Ankylostoma didunale. So the new word hookworm uh, and the uh, old word hookworm. We are going to discuss about them. There's nothing much about them. So let's just discuss Nikato. Please, doctor, any question at, at this level? Or am I too fast? No. Okay. No. no. Nikato Americanus. The Nikato Americanus is also known as the new word, new word hookworm. Please take note. Please take note of the other names. Take note of the other names. Please, it's very important. And the other one is the what? Ankylostoma. Ankylostoma duodenale. Duodenale. Please take note of these other names. This Ankylostoma duodenale is known as the old word. Old word. Please take notes. They are the same thing, they are nearly the same thing. And how do you get these two things? How do you get both of them? It's gotten by maybe, let's say, it, it, it penetrates through intact skin. Maybe you are walking, just like your, your flukes. Please, if you have not watched the video on fluke, go and watch it. The video on flukes, your chistosoma, is available on, on uh, YouTube if you want to. I, I posted this stuff. So you can watch a video on that. And uh, the same way is that also it's also penetrates. The transmission is by penetration. It penetrates through intact skin. And when it penetrates through intact skin, people that walk barefooted or that goes around and it's, it enters them. And when it enters, it goes to the lung, just like your Ascaris lumbricoides. It can also result into pneumonitis. Are you getting me? And you cough, you swallow it, go to the intestine. And on the intestine, it can be very dangerous. Because it has to, so it's blood sucking. It sucks the blood. And this is associated with a specific anemia, which is the iron deficiency anemia. Please, doctors, don't forget, Nicato Americanus or your Ankylostoma, um, Ankylostoma duodenale, they are associated with iron deficiency anemia. 
So let me talk about the transmission. Transmission is by, let's say somebody walking barefooted, it penetrates through the through intact, intact skin, okay? And when it penetrates through intact skin, like people that are walking barefooted or walking around, it goes to the lung, just like, um, just like your, uh, what's it called? Ascaris, then goes to the lung. I don't, think, I don't think I need to explain that. It goes to the lung, can result into pneumonitis, you cough, mm, then it goes, you swallow it, goes to your intestine, yeah, it causes it sucks the blood, so it causes a disease, and disease is caused. That's very, that's very important. You need to remember, resulting to anemia. What kind of anemia? It's resulting to anemia because it sucks blood. It's uh, let's say sucking blood, and this is resulting to iron deficiency anemia. Please take note. So, because when you are treating the patient, it's very important to keep in mind this person is having iron deficiency anemia. And diagnosis, how do you diagnose it? It's use of the egg. Diagnosis is made by egg. So, you see the eggs in stool. Eggs in stool is diagnostic. And the treatment, you use your iron therapy and you give membendazo. Membendazos and iron therapy as a supportive therapy of course because this patient is uh what's it called losing blood so you want to probably give um iron therapy please at this point any question doctors please any question any question please no. No. doctor can you see this is in the cattle americanus and this is in uh, ankylostoma diodonale they are hookworms okay please take note okay all right so doctors, we can see this picture. What can you identify? This is also another, this is caused by another hookworm. This is uh, Ankylostoma brasiliens. So we have two species of this type, depending on the animal you also get it from. We can have Ankylostoma caninum, and we can have Ankylostoma brasiliens. I know this name might sound ambiguous to us, but doctors, please, you should just try as much as possible to understand. Once you understand, I don't think it will be a big deal, okay? So let's talk about the Ankylostoma brasiliens. They are also known as the dog and cat hookworm, Ankylostoma brasiliens and the uh, Ankylostoma diodonale. Can we all see my whiteboard, doctors? All right. Yes. Continue. Um, <clears throat> hold on. Ankylostoma. So we have the Ankylostoma. Anky Lostoma brasiliens and ankylostoma diodonale. Uh, sorry, canium, sorry. Ankylostoma caninium. Okay, the dog and cat and uh, the dog and cat are uh, hookworm. So first, how do you get this? This also penetrates through intact skin just like your uh, Ankylostoma diodonale and Nicato Americanus. They penetrate through intact skin. And when they penetrate, this one causes also migrants. But this one, it stays on the skin surface. It begins to move on the, beneath the skin. That is why it is referred to as cutaneous lava migrants. So when you look at the skin, you obviously see the lava migrating, very visible. You see the lava migrating around, moving around, moving around. Are you getting me? And this can cause severe itching. And once you see this something migrating around, it's very, very peculiar to this thing. It's very peculiar to ankylostoma, um, what's it called? Uh, Brazilians. And ankylosto uh, an sorry, ankylostoma Brazilian and ankylostoma cardinal. This is very, very peculiar to both of them. So when you see the lava migrating around, you can come to your diagnosis. You can come. The clinical sign is enough. So you see the lava migrating around. Please take note, doctors. Let me write something on that real quick. So I said uh, ankylostoma brasiliens, ankylostoma canino. So penetration or transmission. Transmission is true intact skin. Please take note, true intact skin. And apart from the transmission, 
uh, the what's it called? The disease it causes. The disease it causes. It causes what is called cutaneous cutaneous lava migraine. Please take note, and it can be associated with severe itching or intense intense skin itching. Please take note of this. Okay. So the diagnosis, diagnosis is just clinical signs is enough because you can see the lava migrating, moving around. Clinical signs is enough to come to your diagnosis. And your treatment is Invermectin. You want to use your Ivermectin is enough. Okay. That is how you treat your uh, Ankylostoma brasiliens and Ankylostoma um, canino. Please, at this point, any question, doctors? Any question? Any question regarding to everything before we go to other sets of worms? We see how the strogyloides tecoralis to talk about. So, quick one, we are going to talk about our strogyloides tecoralis before we talk about the one transmitted by flies. So, your Usheria Bancroft and all the rest, Drancuculus medinensis, we are going to talk about that. But, quick one, let's discuss about uh, strogyloides. Stecoralis, but I, I doubt if the time we have will be enough for us. Okay, doctors, let me hold on. Probably we'll continue with other link. Hold on, give me some seconds. 